how to make particle effects in Unity. Well, you begin with a particle system. What is a particle system, you might ask? It's a system that controls particles. Well, it's essentially a bunch of functions and features that allows you to control a particle. And what is a particle, you may also ask? Anything. A particle can be anything. It can be a texture, like an image, like a flipbook, or it can be a 3D object, like a plane or even a dragon. A particle can take any shape or color you want, as well. Besides all of that, it can have physical properties, like being affected by gravity, by velocities and other forces, rotate and even collide. A particle can be all of these. So yeah, that's it. But wait, there's more, you know? In Unity there's two particle systems. The good old G Shuriken particle system, which is used in pretty much any game made with Unity, and then more recently Visual Effect Graph, which is used for more complex effects, even though I use it for pretty much creating any ability, but it doesn't work very well on mobiles. What's the difference between the particle system and VFX graph? Well, particle system runs on the CPU and VFX graph runs on the GPU, making it very lightweight when handling millions of particles. Oh, and one looks like this, where everything is nicely organized, and the other one can look something like that. And all the particle systems need a material. A material is a shader. And the shader is a little program that runs on your graphic card, that tells it how to render pixels on your screen. Shaders can do all sorts of things, from a simple text scrolling, to a full screen effect, or even mesh distortion. Well, if you browse my channel, you'll find plenty of tutorials about shaders graph with VFX graph and particle system. Materials slash shaders combined with particle systems are a powerful tool for VFX artists. But let's get back to the question of how do you make an effect in Unity? Well, particle effects, if you start with a particle system, they immediately start spawning this little particle. If you turn on 2D wireframe, you will notice it's a quad. It's already a 3D object. Every particle is a 3D object. And you can slap on it any texture you want. You can even paint textures specifically made for that quad. Or even flipbooks, which is a series of images, of sprites. And you can decide if it faces the camera, as if it was a billboard, or any other direction. You can tell it to spawn only one particle, that particle can live one second or a minute, that particle can move or just stay there, and that particle can also spawn within a certain radius of a shape, like a cube, a sphere or a cone. You can tell it to spawn in a burst mode or continuously. You can tell it to loop or not loop, and you can change its color. And then you can decide if it always spawns with the same angle or with a random angle. And besides all of this, you can animate values like the size, the color, velocity, and so on. You can even tell a particle to spawn another particle whenever it dies or whenever it hits a wall, which is called submeters. And visual effects or particle effects or real time effects or game effects are done by stacking a bunch of particle systems together, where each one has its own purpose, where each one can use one or more of the functions that I mentioned, as if they were layers in a painting. So for example, if you stack a particle system with a quick flash, and then add another particle system with a bunch of quick sparks, you essentially get a very basic impact. To spice this up, add another layer for a shockwave, and now we get something a little bit more interesting. So as you can see, it's all about layering, and making sure each one has a purpose. Furthermore, if you wanted to improve this, you could work on your textures, and it will definitely make it more unique, especially if they are hand-drawn by you. As a matter of fact, textures are one of the most important aspects of building particle effects along with finding the right timings, balanced contrasts, and some color theory as well. And gameplay and a bunch of other things. You could definitely create particle effects knowing this. As a matter of fact, I have compiled these into my courses. I speak about this in some of my older courses, the theory of visual effects. 
the recent ones are for things a little bit more advanced, like building explosions, or an ability set for a MOBA character, or just very specific effects, but they are complex in some way. Or on my free tutorials here on my YouTube channel. So that's essentially it, of course I could keep talking about this for hours and we could go in depth much more, but I think it's a nice summarized way for you to know how to build particle effects in Unity. And make sure to check out my channel where you will find so much more and you will definitely become more comfortable when building effects. And if you want to get access to a huge library of visual effects where you can study effects up close or use them in your games, I made it all available on my patrons page. It's definitely a nice repository of visual effects. I left a link below and I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month and I want to do a quick shout out to the top tier patrons which are Alberto Sageris, Alexi, Alan Alster, Ben Basso, Daniel Schmidt, David Molina, Diego Marcos, Phoenix, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Jagor Severinsky, Ingward Popov, Ivan Jacobi, Casey Miller, Leon Alt, Matt Moran, Mike Bell, Oitzk, Pierre Mayuru, Padipsen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Barry Suta, Wherever Marta, Will Pullion, Vlad, Bijina Seru, Minja Kim and Sangyan O. Oh. So thanks for watching and I hope now you know how to make particle effects in Unity or at least become more comfortable with the idea. Thank you. Bye.